Hello guys, welcome back. Let's talk about another body's blood pressure regulator, the renin adjutensin aldosterone system. I'll give you an overview of this magnificent way of how the body controlling blood pressure. Alright, without further ado, let's move on to our topic. The renin angiotensin aldosterone system is a complex adrenal multi-organ system that regulates our blood volume and systemic vascular resistance. While the bioreceptor reflex responds in a short-term manner or decreased arterial pressure, the RAS on the other hand is responsible for more chronic alterations. There are three compounds involved in renin angiotensin aldosterone system. This is the renin, angiotensin 2, and aldosterone. These three acts to elevate arterial pressure in response to decreased renal blood pressure, decreased salt delivery to the distal convoluted tubule, and sympathetic stimulation or beta agonism. Through this mechanism, the body can elevate the blood pressure in a prolonged manner. So how does RAS work? The RAS involves the kidneys, systemic vasculature, liver, lungs, and the brain. So let's start in the kidneys. Within the kidneys, there are branches of small blood vessels entering the renal glomerulus. These small blood vessels is called afferent arterioles, where you can find the specialized cells, juxtaglomerular cells. Juxtaglomerular cells are the primary site of renin storage and release. When there is a reduction of pressure in these arterioles due to decreased renal blood flow or a decrease in systemic blood pressure, it causes the release of renin, whereas increased pressure inhibits renin release. Adjacent to the juxtaglomerular cells of the afferent arterioles, lies another specialized cells called macula densa. Macula densa are sensitive to the changes of sodium and chloride ions concentration in the tubular fluid. So reduction in tubular sodium chloride stimulates renin release by the juxtaglomerular cells. In contrast, when sodium chloride is elevated in the tubular fluid, renin release is inhibited. Renin also releases in response to sympathetic nerve stimulation. When blood pressure is low, the nervous system activates the sympathetic nervous system and sends a signal that acts on the beta-1 adrenoceptor located in the juxtaglomerular cells to release renin. Now, once renin has been released into the blood, it can act on its target, the angiotensinogen. Angiotensinogen is a protein produced in the liver and is found continuously circulating in the plasma. Renin then acts to cleave angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is physiologically inactive and it pretty much does nothing. However, it acts as a precursor for angiotensin 2. And this angiotensin 2 is the one we need in this system. When angiotensin 1 in the circulation reaches the lungs, it will be converted to angiotensin 2. This conversion is catalyzed by an enzyme called angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE. ACE is found predominantly in the vascular endothelium of the lungs, although ACE is also generated in smaller quantities within the kidneys in the renal endothelium. All right. Angiotensin 2 is a potent peptide hormone. It binds to various angiotensin receptors throughout the body to exert its effects. It stimulates vasoconstriction to the blood vessels. As we know, vasoconstriction will cause increased systemic vascular resistance, and that will lead to an increased blood pressure, right? Remember that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output times systemic vascular resistance. In the kidneys, it promotes sodium reabsorption, means if there is sodium reabsorption, water retention will follow, right? Because 
Where sodium goes, water goes. And uh, more water means more plasma volume. More plasma volume will cause to increase venous return. That would increase blood pressure by the Frank Starling mechanism, if you remember that mechanism, right? Okay, angiotensin 2 also induces the release of aldosterone. So this is another compound that we need. Aldosterone can be found in the adrenal cortex. So due to the presence of angiotensin 2, the adrenal cortex releases the aldosterone. Aldosterone is a mineralocorticoid, a steroid hormone that causes additional sodium reabsorption and water retention in the kidneys. Sodium and water retention causes an increased blood volume and subsequently increases blood pressure. In the brain, angiotensin II has several effects. It acts on the hypothalamus to stimulate thirst and encourage water intake. It induces the posterior pituitary to release antidiuretic hormone and promotes water retention into the kidneys. It reduces the sensitivity of baroreceptors so that it will not counter the effects of the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Alright, all of these effects of angiotensin 2 can lead to an increase in blood pressure. Okay, angiotensin 2 has a 1 to 2 minutes half-life. After that short life, it is degraded to angiotensin 3 and 4, which has a lesser effect. So an overactive RAS will cause chronic hypertension. You know, this system is subject to various hypertensive treatment and management. Like this most common group of drugs, the ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin receptors blocker. Alright, that's the end of our blood pressure regulatory system. Thank you.